What do you hope people take away from the, from the painting? I guess the same thing that I hope everybody takes away from anything I paint, and that is the story. All of the arts are involved in storytelling. Writers tell stories, actors tell stories, musicians tell stories, interviewers tell stories, painters tell stories. I'm just telling a story, and instead of telling it with words, which I'm not very good at, I'm telling it in paint, which I do have a talent for. So I hope that people still see the story. Local artist John Cogan is doing his part to bring a little color to downtown Aztec this summer. Commissioned by the Aztec Museum and Historical Society, Cogan is creating what museum directors hope will be the first in a series of murals depicting early life in the city. The difficult part of this project is transferring a black and white photograph into a color painting that is 15 by 40 inches to a color painting that is 15 by 40 feet. Were so, you intimidated at the prospect of doing something that big? Have yes, you never done it before? <laughs> I, Dale, I was. I was very intimidated, and that's one of the reasons I did it, because <laughs> I don't like to be scared by things. Mm. And, you see the fear and you confront it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. I, it scared me, and I confronted the fear. I thought, if I don't do this, he's going to find somebody else to do it. And then I'm going to say, gee, I could have done that. Oh, wait, John, how did, they, how did the mural come to be? It's, uh, we've got the little sketch, uh, not sketch, but I guess the, the miniaturized version of the mural here. How did, how did you become involved with this project? Uh, Dale Anderson called me, and he said that there was a donor that wanted to donate some money to the Aztec Museum so that the Aztec Museum could have some murals painted on some of the exterior walls along Main Street in downtown Aztec. Ana Chavez was looking through photographs that the museum had had, and I'm not sure if she had scanned them or not, but she found this black and white photograph, which we've since dated to about 1926. And there's these two wranglers running a small herd of buffalo south on Main Street. So it's an actual photo. There is an actual photograph. I've got some of the scans of the photograph in here. But that. this is the actual photo. That is the That's actual the photograph. So, you know, we move things around. Didn't have any color. I just invented the color on okay. this painting. This painting that I did is acrylic on masonite, and it's 112 scale. Uh -huh. I did that as a 15 by 40 inch painting, and this painting is 15 by 40 feet. How long do you think it's going to take to finish it? it well, it took us a week to actually prepare the wall. Part of the problem with the wall is it had a really... Uh, I think we got high, gritty. Really. High, a gritty yeah. stucco on it. And we knew we could not paint on that. We had to smooth it down. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we did was we took off as much of the tops of that stucco as we could. And we used scrapers. Um, I tried to use a grinder, and all I did was ground into the wall. So we gave that up. But we ended up with a belt sander. Uh -huh. We did a lot of it with that. Then once we had it sanded down, it wasn't anywhere near smooth, but it was better than it had been. Then we filled in all of that, the indentations and everything, mm -hmm. with an acrylic modeling paste, or I guess it's the it's made by a company named Golden, and they call theirs molding paste. And we colored it sort of the same color as the wall, but I colored each bucket individually. So when we first started, we had this kind of patchwork looking <laughs> thing. This was about by about Thursday of that first week. And we had people walking oh, by saying, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It really was because we made up stories. I mean, we, <laughs> there was one guy, we told him we were working for the CIA and we said it was straight faces too. Mm. And he looked at us and kind of nodded and, and just walked, just walked right didn't, on. didn't ask any more <laughs> questions. When we were done with the pencil sketch and everybody was happy with it, then I translated that pencil sketch into this painting. And I did actually did that the same way I did going from this size to that one. And that is, I took the pencil sketch and I drew a square grid on it. And then I drew a square grid on this piece of masonite that I painted this on. And I transferred each one of those grids individually, drawing freehand each grid onto here. And then once I had them transferred, then I painted it. Now we didn't have these figures yet. 
And I got some models, Dale helped me, and we photographed some models and had them pose the way we thought we wanted them posed. And then I added those in where there was some give and take back and forth with the members of the committee. You know, do we like this? Do we not like this? But once everybody was happy, then we said we're ready to go. We ordered the paint and the beginning of, I think it was the third week of May, I came out here and looked at the wall and started working. I did most of the drawing myself. My daughter helped me a little bit with uh -huh. it one day, mostly because she draws horses better than I do. So she worked on some of these guys <laughs> and got them better than I was doing, I think. That was done in charcoal. So we had the drawing then. Once we had the drawing, it was a matter of starting to paint. And I, I tried to think of it like I would a studio painting. Okay. How, how do you do a studio painting? You start putting paint down, you pick a spot, you pick the color that's right for that spot, and you start putting it in. And I started with these two buffalo over here. Well, we did some of the road just uh -huh. because I had some help, and we got some of that out of the way. And then I started working on those buffalo, and by the first day, I had enough of those guys done. I think it was that was the beginning of the second week. Uh -huh. So that was, uh, let's see, this is the fourth week, so that was week before last. One of the uh, things that's difficult about this is I'm used to working in a studio and being able to step back from my painting whenever I need to to see how it looks from a distance. And of course, this being a really large painting, I would like to step way back. But working in the lift, it's difficult to step back. So every once in a while, I just have to move it back here a few feet so I can get an idea of what the painting's looking like. Anyway, one of the problems I noticed I've had with this in the morning between about 9.30 and 11 is as the sun comes across the building and moves behind it, the shadows from the ripples in the stucco get longer and longer. And therefore, I'm getting more and more of the painting inside these little shadows, and it changes the color that I perceive. So I have a hard time judging whether or not I have the right color in there. And I've noticed that when I'm painting during the morning, between about 9.30 and 11, I really have to watch carefully and make sure that my colors are close. And I also find that I shouldn't do subtle areas that time of the day. So anyway, I'm not going to do any more work on the faces because of that this morning. I'm going to, I've got to finish the clothing here on these figures, and then I'll probably move over and do the two horses later today. And that will pretty much leave just the large buffalo. So now, what's your background? How did you, I mean, most people know you as sort of a local artist. I, I am a local artist. You know, uh, my background's not in art. That doesn't surprise you. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't. <laughs> How did you end up being an artist? Just, I, it's a calling, I imagine, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is a calling. Yeah. It's um, Talent's not mine. It's God's talent. Yeah. He gave me the talent. And all the creation is God's. I'm, I'm painting mm -hmm. with his talent what he made. But it does take work. Mm -hmm. And you've got to know your subject matter. Of course, Russell knew cowboys mm -hmm. and cows sure and horses does. and... Uh, the Native Americans, he knew all that stuff. So he was painting what he knew. And I, I have always loved landscapes. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I grew up in Midland in West Texas. Okay. And my dad had grown up on a cattle ranch up in Buena Vista, Colorado. Oh, right. So every summer we went up there and I just loved the mountains. Yeah. You know, that two weeks we'd spend up in the mountains. Oh, that must have been was, great. Yeah. It was heaven, yeah. you know, it was just wonderful. So what did you, what did you, I mean, you. I, I wanted to paint mountains, uh -huh. but my, my dad was very practical and he said, well, you need to study something else in school sure. so you can go work for a living and then you can paint on the side. Okay. okay. So I went to school and I also happened to have a little bit of talent in math and science. So I studied physics at Texas A&M, got a degree in physics, went to Rice University, got a master's in physics and a PhD in physics, in experimental <laughs> physics. I'm looking for a connection there between yeah, that and art. Every, everybody does. So it was good for me. And then I got out, but the whole time, all this time I was painting. Oh, you, so you were? You oh, I was yeah, still okay. painting. I'd been painting since I was 12. I, okay. My parents uh, got me 
and encouraged Art you, though. They, even they though, even though your dad me. wanted you to do a he, find, do a, find something to to do with your life, you exactly. still okay. okay. Yeah, oh, they still good. encouraged me. So yeah, I, I took art lessons starting when I was about eleven or twelve, and I learned to oil paint. But the guy that taught me didn't know how to do landscapes. Uh -huh. We we'd go in every Saturday morning, and he would have a still life set up right. for us, and then we'd paint the still life, and that was good. It was good practice. But I didn't want to paint still yeah. lives. I wanted to paint mountains. Right. So eventually, I quit doing that and just started painting on my own. And after I got married in 1976, my wife really encouraged me. Uh -huh. And and she's much more think outside of the box than I do. And one day she said, you're really pretty good at this. And I was selling some paintings. And uh -huh. I said, yeah, I wish it's something you always thought would be fun to do for a living. She uh -huh. said, well, why don't you? Well, because I was told I couldn't. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things you, you hear these voices sure. and they get ingrained into your head. And that's just not something you do. Mm -hmm. And my counselors and teachers all said, oh, no, you have to do math and physics. Yeah. And you're good dad, at it. Yeah. You're good at that. Yeah, this, <laughs> the, you can make a lot of money doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. you, and Karen said, I, why don't you do what you love? She said, life's too short not yeah. to do something yeah. you love doing. So I said, oh, okay, mm -hmm. you, you think so? And she said, you know, let's give it a try. I really put myself to it part-time. Uh -huh. While I was in grad school, and I worked uh, for an oil company for a couple of years mm -hmm. doing geophysics, and that whole time, every spare minute I was painting, suddenly I was selling so many paintings that I didn't have enough time to do both. So, so when, when was that? When was that? This was in 1982. Two. Okay. So I called Karen one day from the office, and I said, guess what I did today? She said, you quit, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I said, she knows yes, you better than you do. <laughs> yeah, she did. So uh, that was... Gosh, that was going on 28 years ago. Uh -huh. So now you're going to the Grand Canyon this September. This will be in, in 2010, September. Mm -hmm. we're talking. Is, do you have any idea where, where you're going to set yourself up? North Rim or South Rim, I guess? Th this is on the South Rim. Okay. I don't think anybody has painted on the North Rim just yeah. because it's such a long trip around. Yeah. And we're, the whole thing is... A lot less crowded, though. <laughs> That's true. Some of us talked about it, but we decided we would have to get up at 3 in the morning yeah. and drive around sure. and paint and then come back late at night. Mm -hmm. And we'd really lose another day or two of painting sure. because we'd have to sleep. Yeah. Although it's interesting, these people that, that I'm painting with at the Grand Canyon, they are serious about this. I got up a couple of mornings and I thought, boy, I'm going to beat everybody out there. And I'd get out there and here would be the sun coming up. And there's somebody set up over here and this other one set up. And they're already oh. out there. And I'm thinking, you know, I think of myself as being committed, but these, these people guys are really committed. Really committed, yeah. And, and then at sunset, they're still painting until it's almost dark. Huh. Now, during the middle of the day, the light tends to be like Little, this. Yeah. It's kind of flat, we yeah. call it, is what we say. Yeah. And you don't, you can get good paintings in the middle of the day, but not as easily. I've, as, I've heard for photography and painting that the mornings are usually the best time because the light is softer. Is yeah, that, is and that? you usually don't have as much dust in the uh -huh. atmosphere as you do in the evening. But the evenings can be good. That yeah. dust sometimes sure. will give you a really color in the sunset. Orange, and, mm -hmm. beautiful orange. You know, 10, 15 years from now, and this is still there, and people walk by it, and maybe forgotten how it got there. What do you hope people take away from the from the painting? I hope some of the people involved will be around to add their anecdotal evidence to it. The young people that posed for this, I hope someday that, that they will tell their grandchildren, that was me when I was 13, and I posed for this nutty artist that was painting this big painting. Uh, one day I had my daughter bring my grandson out here, and he's only 15 months old, but we put a paintbrush in his hand and let him stand in front of the mural. And Dale Anderson took some photos. Mm -hmm. And someday I hope he stands there in front of that mural with his grandkids and says, my grandpapa painted that, and I helped. John Kogan, thank you very much.